3 million Americans have gotten their first dose of a coronavirus vaccine in the last week. That's according to the White House. The pace of first dose shots has been climbing for several weeks, bringing the U.S. to President Biden's goal of partially vaccinating 70 percent of adults. Officials also say the states with the highest rates of infection have seen their daily vaccination rates more than double. But now the U.S. is averaging more than 60,000 new infections per day. The head of the CDC says anyone who contracts the highly contagious Delta variant can infect five other unvaccinated people. That's twice as many people as the original strain. Mireya Villarreal begins our coverage from Missouri. Cox Health here in Springfield just brought in a new morgue and they are doubling their oxygen reserve all in anticipation of a rise in COVID cases and in COVID deaths. Over the weekend, they hit 187 patients inside with the virus, the highest number they've ever had since the start of the pandemic. Tonight, COVID cases are skyrocketing in Missouri with healthcare workers bearing the brunt. Many nurses say every night they go home and they're, they're crying. Average daily cases have tripled in the last month, while hospitalizations have nearly doubled. And the hardest hit area includes Springfield, where this chart shows the dramatic rise of COVID patients in one hospital system since mask mandates were lifted, and then two big holiday weekends. We're very concerned at this point um, because we are headed back into school and we have seen disease spreading in um, our kids who are not vaccinated and don't have the option to be vaccinated. As bad as things are in Missouri, they're worse in four other states, including Florida, where things are the worst they've ever been. More than 10,000 are now hospitalized and there are more than 21,000 new cases. The numbers that we're seeing are are unbelievable. And tonight, the CDC is warning that it's not over yet. While we desperately want to be done with this pandemic, COVID-19 is clearly not done with us. Adding a reminder that vaccines do work. I want to be clear, while vaccinated people can spread the virus if they get a breakthrough infection, the odds of them getting sick in the first place are far lower than those who are unvaccinated. Among the new cases is U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham, who is fully vaccinated, but after having flu-like symptoms, tested positive. Senator Graham tweeted, without vaccination, I am certain I would not feel as well as I do now. My symptoms would be far worse. The Delta variant is responsible for the nation's exponential surge, according to the CDC. In New York, the push continues to mandate vaccinations. Today, Governor Andrew Cuomo announced that 68,000 state transit workers will be required to get vaccinated or face weekly testing and that others should follow suit. Private businesses, I am asking them and suggesting to them go to vaccine only admission. Meanwhile, back in Missouri, vaccination rates are low and opposition is high. As COVID continues to surge at this hospital near the Lake of the Ozarks, the prognosis is grim. We're working longer hours, and when we see the level of sickness that we are seeing and the number of deaths, it takes a toll on the healthcare workers. And that's what we are seeing. We're seeing burnout. Does that include yourself? Uh, yes, it does. Healthcare workers tell me they are most concerned about the rise in pediatric cases. The largest school district here in Springfield actually says as students and staff go back to school, they are going to be required to wear masks. They say if children under the age of 12 can't get the vaccination and the community isn't doing their part, they have no other choice but to mandate that everyone wear masks to make sure they keep everyone safe. Elaine. Mireya Villarreal, thank you. Dr. Jessica Shepard joins me now. She's the chief medical officer at Very Well Health. Welcome to you, doctor. The Delta variant is driving this most recent surge. The U.S. is now averaging more than 63,000 new infections daily. What are doctors and other frontline healthcare workers facing right now, especially in areas of high transmission? Now, what we have seen in healthcare settings is that there is major concern when we think of ICUs and emergency rooms 
that initially had decreased the amount of COVID cases that were, they were getting to each of their units now significantly increasing. This now puts more risk to healthcare providers who went through a rough year and a half of trying to ensure that they decrease that COVID transmission as well as deaths in the ICU. So quite frankly, from a healthcare perspective, this is something that is concerning and something that we are very readily available to decrease those risks. However, we need the availability of vaccination efforts as well as for the public to understand the importance of vaccines. Well, Senator Lindsey Graham has now tested positive for COVID-19 after being vaccinated, but these cases are extremely rare. A recent analysis of state data from the Kaiser Family Foundation found less than 1% of people had a breakthrough infection. Remind us, doctor, what do we know about these breakthrough cases? Now, breakthrough cases, when we think of vaccinations, are actually something that we can expect to see. Now, as you stated, those instances are going to be very low because we know that with vaccination, you're going to decrease the transmission of the virus. Now, what we do have on our hands is the Delta variant, which is very highly contagious. And what we've seen in instance from before, the other variants is that some people People may infect maybe two to three people around them when we think of transmission and infectiousness. However, now with the Delta variant, there may be transmission for up to five to nine people with someone who has the Delta variant of the COVID vaccine. Well, there are 100 million unvaccinated people in the U.S. who are currently eligible for a vaccine. Dr. Fauci says those people are, quote, propagating this outbreak. And he adds, we need to, quote, do something to change that. So what is working in vaccination efforts right now? And what could public health officials change to reach the unvaccinated? Now, that is an important question because when we thought of July 4th as that hallmark in which we would have seen most of the adults in the U.S. population getting at least one of their doses of the vaccination, we fell shy of that deadline. However, the U.S. has reached a milestone recently of getting at least one coronavirus dose to 70 percent of adults, and that has happened that just today. So we are seeing that we are getting to that number. However, our efforts need to be more gregarious. Uh, maybe even more aggressive when we think of the incentive of getting vaccines, but also the younger population, which we are finding have a higher distensibility and probability of giving the variant, especially the Delta variant. Well, the Biden administration is recruiting the help of so-called influencers to help fight vaccine misinformation and boost vaccinations. They include YouTubers, TikTokers and Twitch streamers. Do you believe this will be an effective strategy? How big of an obstacle is the misinformation that's circulating online? Yeah, I think that this is actually a wonderful effort when we think of those that need to be influenced mostly are the younger population. So if we can have people who can speak to them in a way that can be heard and someone that they can relate to, we know that these are people who can share the importance of having conversation with friends and family and encouraging communities to get vaccinated. This is really what we need more of because we have tried efforts in the past. And as you can see from our numbers, we need quite much more integration and actually having the conversation with the people that need this vaccination and impressing the importance on why it is so pivotal for us to protect not only ourselves, but our fellow communities. Well, the U.S. Department of Education released its, quote, return to school roadmap. It encourages schools to follow updated CDC mask guidance, which recommends universal indoor mask use for all teachers, staff, students and visitors. Doctor, will this be enough, you think, to keep kids safe, given how contagious the Delta variant is? And is a return to virtual learning, you think, still on the table? Now, I think before we had this Delta variant, I think that we were quite on our way to going back to in-class and having in-person teaching. Now, this return to school roadmap that was released by the U.S. Department of Education really is a resource to support students and educators and teachers, giving them the safe and healthy in-person learning tips that they can use this fall to emerge from a pandemic that was very strong and did kind of put our education system at a... Um, at a default. 
Now, what we know is that this may change very severely over the next few weeks into months as we start to go back to school and what this means. Now, this will change for different states. As we've seen, we've seen some governors that are not necessarily uh, establishing a roadmap that would be for vaccination or wearing masks. However, we do know from the science of this disease is that it does not necessarily mean that a vaccine does not mean that you cannot transmit the virus. We know that there is transmissibility with the virus from someone who has been vaccinated. So we need to impress upon people the message really should be vaccination. And also for those who have been vaccinated, that might mean wearing a mask indoors to decrease the transmission of a virus that has much more contagious factor than we've seen in the past. An important message. Dr. Jessica Shepard, doctor, thank you very much. Thank you.